Hello, everyone, again. Uh, we're looking here at uh, Chapter uh, 22. This will be our final video, and this will be on the Phillips curve. And so our basic question today is, is there some relationship or some link between inflation and unemployment? And for a long time, in the 50s and 60s, uh, a lot of economists thought there was, in fact, an inverse relationship between uh, the two variables. And as a consequence of that, they thought that there was a possibility for policymakers to, in effect, choose from a, a, a menu of inflation and unemployment combinations that they could achieve through appropriate monetary or through appropriate fiscal policy. And so what we want to uh, try to demonstrate here is can we use our standard aggregate demand, aggregate supply model to uh, show where such a relationship might come from? And what we'll see here when we set this up is that uh, monetary and fiscal policy can affect aggregate demand, and that will help generate or give us uh, the relationship, the inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. And so here you can see I've set up a basic aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. And what we're going to do, just for the sake of argument, is start at point A. So the economy will be in long-run equilibrium with an inflation rate of 2% and will be at equilibrium at uh, its full employment level. And so what we want to do here is to map out or to look at how we can go from our basic aggregate demand aggregate supply model over to the Phillips curve. And so notice, let's start, for example, at point A. And so we can go over to the adjacent uh, curve here. Uh, and notice what I've set up here is on the horizontal axis, we have the unemployment rate. And on the vertical axis, just like with the aggregate demand aggregate supply model, we also have the inflation rate. And so point A in the right graph matches up with point A in the left graph. And just for the sake of argument, I've decided to make the natural rate of unemployment at 5%. Because remember here, if we're at equilibrium at the long run, uh, on the long run supply curve at point A, the actual unemployment rate is equal to the natural uh, rate of unemployment. And again, just for the sake of argument, I've assumed that that's at 5%. And so now let's do this. Let's suppose that there's an increase uh, in the money supply. So the uh, Fed pursues an expansionary monetary policy. Well, that would shift the aggregate demand curve to the right up to AD1, uh, as we've shown here. And at least in the short run, uh, we would observe an increase in real GDP. So we move to the right on the horizontal axis. And we'd also observe an increase in inflation as demand in the economy rose relative to its ability to increase output. And so in the short run, we'd observe an increase in inflation uh, to 5%. And so now we'd reach short-run equilibrium at point B. So what we can do then is map point B over into the right graph, just like we map point A over into the right graph. And so since the vertical axes match, we can walk right over to point B and notice that we've got a 5% uh, inflation rate over on the, on the right-hand graph. And then we need to figure out, well, gosh, what's happened to the unemployment rate in the right graph? Well, if we're increasing the level of output, it's almost surely that we've increased the level of employment and very likely, therefore, we've reduced the level of unemployment. And just for the sake of argument, I've supposed that the unemployment rate has fallen to, say, 4%. Again, that's only an assumption. And so what we've got now is we have two points, points A and points B, in the right graph that give us two different combinations of unemployment and inflation. And since we're working with straight lines here, what that would allow us to do is, if we wanted to, is we could derive a whole series of points, points C, D, E, and F, and so forth, with a whole succession of aggregate demand curves. And because we have straight lines, however, we only need two points to map out an entire straight line here. And so over on the right curve here, or on the right graph, we now have the Phillips curve. And so that Phillips curve uh, illustrates the inverse relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. And so what we've demonstrated is we can use our regular good old standard aggregate demand aggregate supply model to theoretically demonstrate why we would observe an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. And so then the question becomes, well, in real life, to what extent does this actually hold up? To what extent, in other words, does it match up with the data that we observe? And so let's first start and look at the 1950s and 1960s. And so what I've done here is I've used a handy online uh, graphing tool here to demonstrate to, uh, plot out the various unemployment rates on the horizontal axis against the corresponding uh, yearly inflation rates on the vertical. So if we look at the 1950s and 1960s, the relationship seems to hold up. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, because clearly other things affect inflation and unemployment. But the straight line there, that represents the best fitting regression line. And you can see it has a downward slope, which is exactly as predicted by the Phillips curve. So again, notice other things matter besides 
um, uh, for example, monetary policy. So other factors affect output and employment and the inflation rate. Well, now let's look at the 1970s. Again, we have a best fitting regression line there that has a downward slope. So again, in other words, an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. But notice the slope is a little bit flatter, meaning the relationship isn't quite as strong as, what, as it was in the 50s and the 60s. Moving ahead to the 80s, our best fitting regression line now very nearly has a completely flat slope. It appears there's almost no relationship or no trade-off between unemployment and inflation. And if we go into the 90s, the relationship actually flips around so that it appears to be a positive correlation between unemployment and inflation. So it seems like the Phillips curve isn't really holding up past the 1950s and the 1960s very well at all. Over longer periods of time, so from the 1940s through the 1990s, there doesn't seem to be any really particularly strong relationship as predicted by the Phillips curve. In fact, if, if anything, our best fitting re regression line has a positive slope, meaning there appears to be a positive correlation between the unemployment, unemployment rate and the inflation rate, which is exactly counter to what the Phillips curve predicts. So what the heck happened? Why did that seemingly nice, neat relationship between inflation and unemployment uh, suddenly start to break down? Well. Let's go back, and we will in a second, to our aggregate demand average supply model. In that model, when we set up the Phillips curve, when we derived it, what we didn't do is we didn't let the economy go back to long-run equilibrium. We only allowed it to go to short-run equilibrium, that point B that we talked about, and that's how we derived or showed that you can get an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. And so let's follow up then and see, gosh, well, what happens if we let the economy return back to its normal long-run equilibrium position, which we know that it tends to do. So now this is effectively finishing off the graph that we set up previously. And so this graph matches, at least the first parts of it, match up what we did in the previous graph. So we started at point A in an equilibrium inflation rate of 2% at the full employment, uh, full employment output of uh, real GDP there, Y star. And that matched up with point A over in the right graph at an unemployment rate of 5% and the corresponding inflation rate of 2%. So again, the points A on each graph match up. Well, like again, carrying on here, the points B in each graph match up. So as monetary policy uh, was expansionary, shifted the aggregate demand curve to the right, uh, inflation rose, output rose, and unemployment fell. And we reached short-run equilibrium at point B. So points A and B in this uh, graph right here match up exactly with the points A and B in the previous aggregate demand aggregate supply graph that we did just a few minutes ago. Well, remember, however, point B is a temporary equilibrium point. The economy is operating above its maximum sustainable capacity. And as a result of that, resources become relatively scarce, resource prices tend to rise, the profit margins tend to fall, and lower profit margins, other things equal, will tend to cause profit maximizing firms to reduce their level of output. And visually, that would be shown by the short-run supply curve shifting back to the left from the initial one, SRAS 0, to the green one, SRAS 1. And so as the short-run supply curve shifts back to the left, the economy moves from point B back toward point C at its new long-run equilibrium. And so notice we still have to get back to our normal maximum sustainable level output at Y star, but we've done so at a relatively higher inflation rate going from 2% to 5% and now finally at 8%. And so what we want to do then is map point C over into the right graph, just like we mapped over points A and points B. Well, notice that points A and C are both on the same level of output. And so it's probably pretty likely that they also have the same level of unemployment associated with them. And so point C then has to lie back at the unemployment rate of 5%. But since demand in the economy is higher, Overall inflation has to be correspondingly higher. So our new equilibrium inflation rate, again, is say 8%. So that, again, maps over into the right graph and corresponds to point C. And so what we, in effect, have is a whole shift of the Phillips curve. And when the Phillips curve shifts, then what we observe is a lack of a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. And so over time, you can observe point A, in terms of a combination output or uh, inflation unemployment, point B as an unemployment inflation combination, and point C as an unemployment inflation combination. And so there isn't a trade-off in the long run between 
uh, inflation and unemployment. And what we observe here then are uh, Phillips curves or possibly a whole series of Phillips curves depending on how the economy adjusts back to long run equilibrium. And so what happens is that effectively that the inverse relationship we observe between inflation and unemployment is only a short run phenomena. It does not last in the long run. So again, our basic point here is there isn't a long run trade off between inflation and unemployment and that the unemployment rate tends to return to whatever its natural rate is. Again, and that's 5% in our fake made up example here. And so what we want to take away from this so far is that the trade-off is really nothing more than a short-run idea. And what we've in effect been able to do is invent the long-run Phillips curve, which shows that there's no trade-off between uh, inflation and unemployment in the long run. And we've also shown that each short-run Phillips curve is associated with its own short-run aggregate supply curve. Well, now let's add another wrinkle. So our previous analysis suggested that, well, at least in the short run, policymakers might be able to get a temporary trade-off between inflation and output. It won't last in the long run, but they might be able to get it temporarily. But here's what we want to do now. Well, what happens if inflation expectations rise? Because in our discussion of how we derive and use the aggregate demand aggregate supply model, we talked about how one of the things that shifts the short run supply curve is inflation expectations. And so what we'll discover in our next graph here is that when inflation expectations rise, the short run Phillips curve will shift right away. And so what we'll have, what we're gonna call the expectations augmented Phillips curve. Each short run Phillips curve has its own associated level of expected inflation. And then what we'll discover is there might not even be a short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. So now let's return to our aggregate demand aggregate supply model graph matched up with our Phillips curve graph here. So the curve on the, the graph on the left matches up exactly with the uh, curves that we've done in our previous two graphs. We start at point A at initial equilibrium inflation of 2% at full employment output at point A. That maps over to point A in the right graph as well, the inflation rate of 2% and unemployment rate of 5%. And so now, just like before, let's suppose the the Fed pursues an expansionary monetary policy. Well, that shifts the aggregate demand curve to the right. That, of course, is going to push up inflation. Now, in our previous example, we had the economy temporarily operating above full employment. But let's suppose that as soon as the central bank, the Fed, increases the uh, money supply, pursues an expansionary policy, that people's inflation expectations rise correspondingly, and they do it in a, in a simultaneous way so that our old inflation expectations were 2% and our new inflation expectations happen to be 8%. In other words, they match up with where actual inflation will end up in the long run. So we start out at point A, the Fed pursues an expansionary monetary policy, the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right as shown there. But simultaneous to that, because inflation expectations have risen, the short run aggregate supply curve starts to, at the same time, and this is the important part, shift back to the left. So what happens is the economy adjusts in the left graph from point A toward point C. In other words, we don't observe a short run increase in output and therefore we don't observe a short run decrease in the unemployment rate. So the economy in the left graph moves from point A toward point C. Well, what happens in the left graph has to match up with what goes on in the right graph. So in the right graph, we observe the economy starting at point A and ending at point C in the long run. And so that what we observe is there is no short run trade off between inflation and unemployment as long as inflation expectations adjust accordingly. And so there's no short run trade off. And that's a really important policy consideration here. And so what we can observe then is a whole shifting series of short run Phillips curves. And so what has been done here is there's been a whole plot, series of plots looking at the unemployment rate against the inflation rate. And so our prediction would be that under high inflationary expectations that the Phillips curve, the short run Phillips curve would shift very far to the right. And if you look up to the top of the right graph there in the 70s and early 80s, there were relatively high inflation rates and those corresponded with a unemployment rate that is relatively high in terms of, you know, in the order of around 8% or so. Uh, 
So high inflationary expectations corresponded with a relatively high Phillips curve. However, if you go to, for example, the 60s and maybe, for example, the late 1990s, the inflation expectations were relatively low, and so we see a short-run Phillips curve that is substantially further to the left, in other words, shifted down to the left, compared to periods when the inflation expectations are relatively high. So again, the point here is this. The Phillips curve shifts over time. And because the Phillips curve, the short-run Phillips curve, shifts over time, we don't observe any particular long-run relationship between inflation and unemployment. So what we again, well, we want to wrap up here, and our, our basic major point is this. There is no long-run trade-off between inflation and unemployment. There might not even be, for policymakers, the opportunity to get a short-run trade-off either. That might not exist as long as inflation expectations adjust. But what we'll also see, and we saw from some of the graphs we demonstrated, that short-run factors, uh, short-run changes in the business cycle will affect both inflation and unemployment, and that will be independent of any policy changes. And then finally, in the long run, unemployment is affected by the same factors that affect long-run economic growth. For example, changes in demographics, changes in technologies, and things of that nature. Thank you very much.